Today's hike was in southern Arizona. Kelly and I were joined by my brother Richard, and we went to a reptile paradise down Ruby Road. Richard will tell you where we started. Okay, Richard. Where are we at? I see the lake. Uh, Pena Blanca Lake. Oh, poison ivy. Pena Blanca Lake, I agree. Oh yeah, look at it. Yeah. Climbing up the tree. It's taking me to more poison ivy. The lake was our first stop. And it's more of a birder place. And I can imagine a lot of birds coming to get these caterpillars. Crazy. In this area, there are 625 different plants, 130 different species of birds, and as the reptile guys know, a number of rare and endangered species of reptiles, such as the vine snake. I believe the green rats found here, Arizona coral snake, hook nose snake. If you wonder what Richard's doing, this is his first ever selfie. Had to show him how to do it. We quickly walked around the lake and checked some of the birds. Nothing too exciting as far as I was concerned, but I guess if you're a birder, this might be be pretty fun. I just couldn't tell you, but I was excited to see a turtle. Unfortunately, Kelly scared it before I could get a good picture. The Sonoran mud turtle is found here, but I don't believe that was it. So I was just stuck taking bird pictures. But we'd soon leave here and head towards Sycamore Canyon. And you'll never believe what we were going to see. As reptile people, you probably think we're looking for the vine snake. And yeah, we were. We're looking for one of the other rare reptiles. And of course, that would have been exciting. But we were going to look for ball moss. Okay, Richard, we've driven miles down a dirt bumpy road to get to where? We're getting ready to head into the Sycamore Canyon just off of the Ruby Road, probably about 10 miles from the abandoned mining town of Ruby. And where was that? What was the lake that we came from? Uh, we came from Pena Blanca Lake. And you see, we're just starting the hike and there's a straggler behind us. He found skeletons of prior hikers that came through. We're out. I did take one photo of the skeletons, but we're moving on. Taking a video. What's this place called? I think this is Hank Spring. Hank and Yank Ruins. Yep. Is the name of the ruins somewhere. And there's the seep, the water yeah, coming out of the mountain. A little bit of water seeps out of there. If you look back into here, you see all those rocks, and I think that might be where the ruins kind of started, maybe. I don't know. But we're here, according to Richard, looking for something called ball moss. Yep, you heard it here. And I'm thinking it's based on a paper Richard had read that was dated over 50 years ago. Ball moss is found in three locations in Arizona. He'd gone with his grandson to one and tried to find it and was unsuccessful. And this was another location where it was found. We didn't really have much hopes of finding it, but we figured what the heck, we'll go on the hike. Anyone know what this stream is called? I think it's Sycamore Creek. We believe we're at Sycamore Creek. In Sycamore Canyon. In Sycamore Canyon. Richard taking a picture. I'm just 
What do you have to say, Kelly? I'm hungry as always. He's hungry. It is 10 o'clock. Sycamore Creek has disappeared. Now we're just in a dry creek bed. I do too in the textures. All the texture of this rock. This is pretty, pretty neat. Yeah, this is what we do. Different terrain now. The Sycamore Creek has popped back up. It's beautiful. Oh. And this is pretty cool in here. All right, Rich. Just off of the Ruby Road. And we are looking for ball moss. Jerry, what do you have to add? I hope we find it. We're about 21 miles away from Aravaca Canyon, which we will drive through, and also the old mining town of Ruby. Was it a mining town? Yes. I don't have high expectations that we'll find it, but we might. When you start it's on. It. Beautiful place. That's it. Paul taking a video. That's it, Richard. You have anything more than beautiful place? Here's the thing. We are in search. Not only is this a beautiful place, we are in search of the elusive ball moss that Richard has a study on from about 50 years ago. That's we're hopeful. The ball moss, according to the study, can be found on the cliff walls in the shadows and also in the trees. So we kept an eye out, but even if we weren't gonna find it or didn't find it, it's still a spectacular place. But we still maintained hope. The longer we hike, the crazier we get. And even though we're enjoying seeing the scenery, sometimes we get a little weird. And I made a little challenge to Richard. I'm gonna have Richard do his Elvis Presley impersonation. I don't know if I could do it. You can do okay, it. Yeah, I'll try. And I hope Jerry edits this out. I'm itching like a man on a fuzzy tree. I'm in love. I'm all shook up. Oh, my, yeah. <laughs> What'd you think of that, Kelly? I think that was mighty good, and Elvis has left the canyon. You want to try your version? No. <laughs> I'll have to work on Kelly and see if I can get him to sing. But here's some cactus. Taking pictures of the endangered Sonoran chub. Hopefully you can see him swimming around in there. Yellowish. Look at all the lichens, just zoom in on these, Jerry. Orange colors, just, just spectacular. And then here's, here's mosses in here. It's just, just look at that. Kelly likes this moss stuff. I do. Lichens. Lichens. It's beautiful. It's just, and it comes up so good on your camera other cliffs yeah just spectacular the lichens the flowers whatever this red stuff is oh this feels good but no ball moss yet we've seen endangered fish but no reptiles no ball moss so, just spending my time smelling the flowers. 
Actually, since COVID, I can't really smell much, but at least I'm looking at the flowers. And next, what we find? A cave. What do you have to say, Richard? Uh, does he regret his Elvis impression? I do. <laughs> Found this other cave. Why, I don't know. But we keep hiking up the side of a mountain to get to places. And there would be Kelly Paul. All right. We took plenty of pictures in the cave. A little cooler, enjoyed it. But we needed to get to where two canyons converge, where the ball moss is supposed to be found. So we headed back down. And it wasn't too long until we made a discovery. I mean, I noticed some moss hanging out of a tree, so I said, Richard, is this ball moss? And here we go. It is, it is, we found it. The elusive ball moss, it's all over. This is wonderful. I can't believe it, we achieved our goal. Now to show you what Richard's talking about, there it is, that little ball of moss, moss hanging on the branches of the trees. It looks all dead. And I have you to sure say- You sure this wasn't high tide? I just, yeah. Unbelievable. Richard was pretty darn excited, but we'd found the ball moss. I have to admit I was even excited and I don't even care about ball moss. This one actually had a little flower stemming from it. It was pretty cool that we actually found this ball moss. The only places we saw it were on dead branches, never on a live tree, and we never saw it on the, the cliffs or rocks. Okay, what you're seeing here is the ball moss that we came to find. Richard read in a book about three locations in Arizona that have it, and we never expected that we'd actually find it. But thanks to Kelly Paul, Woohoo! We found it. Yeah, Kelly. <laughs> okay, Richard, what do you think? Wonderful. He's excited. He's happy to tell his grandson Sawyer about it. That's right. Stupid. Well, stuff. I mean, not. I mean, I didn't expect it to be here, and I really didn't expect it to be out here in the middle of. Oh yeah, I think. We found our ball moss. We're really excited but we're hot and we've actually found a location where there's quite a bit of water. A swimming hole and a little, little waterfall. Nice little slide rock area. Go on past, Jerry, I wanna get you in the video. It was a cool little swimming hole, little waterfall and slide into the pool. Unfortunately, we didn't go in. But still cool to see. The trees and the stream. And then when you get away from it, it's all just desert and rock. With the occasional flower. But a cool spot to see. Richard's gotten so excited about our discovery that he's disappeared. I think I might have heard him over there. Let me walk over. I soon found him. And then it was starting to hike down these rocks and heading back. Oh, 
See that 70 year old guy scramble. Don't show me after Richard, it's gonna be anticlimactic. We're only a few miles north of the Mexican border. And just as at Richard's house where he lives in or near Sierra Vista, a lot of the immigrants come through the property. What we have here is a pack left probably by an undocumented alien. Uh, we used to find a lot of them in our yard in Hereford and uh, we provided to packs for our kids for school for quite a few years. At the height of the, shall we say, immigration in your area, how many people per day or month would come through your yard? The highest number that I estimated in one month was 400. Wow. 400 in a month. But we don't have much of a problem anymore. And is part of that because where the fence goes now that they're redirected to around the fence? Um, they kind of put a halt to the pickup location was in our yard or in the front at the front of our house and the sheriff's department posted a patrol car there and so the coyotes kind of lost interest in our location as a pickup point. Oh, very cool. I like the story too of leaving the patrol car there and yeah. people trying to turn themselves in. Yeah, they had a mannequin in the patrol car. And one morning I saw an undocumented alien uh, hiding in the grass. And finally he decided that no one was gonna pick him up. So he went over to the patrol car to turn himself in and get a ride back uh, to the border and he stared at that mannequin. He walked around the car a couple of times, shook his head and headed back down to Mexico. <laughs> and how far are we from the Mexican border here? Uh, right here, we're probably about three and a half miles, maybe four. I'm dead. Kelly's dead. I'm out. This is some of the ball moss that we passed coming up that we missed. So it's probably more of it around than we were aware of. This is ball moss. No, I mean, it's it's not like there's, you know, there's a few on that other tree, a couple. There's a couple on this one, which means there's somewhere. Not Video, Richard and Kelly. Someone tell me what this is. You tell that, Richard, and I'll do my reenactment of finding more. Okay, that's coral beans. He says it'll kill you. Yeah, you, you don't, don't eat those. Eat you don't want to eat them. And then, up in the tree, it's all over. There, 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 there. I will point to every spot. It's ball moss. Bam, bam, one, two, three. We found ball moss in several locations, or I should say several trees, as we were heading back. We didn't make it to the location identified in the paper the, where the two canyons joined together, but surprisingly enough, we had actually found the ball moss. There's the crazy caves we got distracted by. First we went in that one at the left, and then that one over at the right. Yeah, well we... Richard's wife, Lark, made us a sack lunch that we're all sitting around in the shade enjoying. Living the life. Living the life. We should be hiking back because Lark's gonna meet us, but nope. Okay, what do we have here? Oh no. I'm supposed to, okay, I'll do it, I'll start it. We have a manzanita. And what that means in Spanish is little apple and they have little edible berries. And then once again, that's Kelly Paul explaining. And Richard was here when we started that tradition. Here you do the uh, Elvis Presley. No. Yes, we're ready. No. Come on, no. Kelly. I got a hunk. No.
<laughs> Get it out of here. <laughs> Leave me alone. Okay, I'm... Kelly wants to do this song, so <laughs> no, he convinced don't. that all three of us have to do it. A one, a two, a one, two, three. I'm, I'm eating like, like a man, man on a fuzzy tree. tree. I'm in love. Uh, I'm, I'm all shook up. up. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. Hey, hey, hey. Hey. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, maybe. If that wasn't bad enough, Kelly re-explains his theory on tree rocks. In case you didn't believe me my first video, there is a prime example of a tree pulling up rocks. Granted, it's not for shelter, it's not for shade, it's not for water, like I said. But that is a perfect example. I feel validated. Once he comes up with a theory, he sticks to it, whether he's right or wrong. That life finds a way. This tree growing up the side of this, bending out around, growing into the side, and up. We finished our hike, drove out past the town of Ruby, and our hike was done. Hope you enjoyed it. Bye.